94 Rocks, Jay-Z hanging out here once again at Rockfest and uh, behind the stage hanging out with uh, my good friend now, Ronnie Radke from Falling Reverse. And first of all, Ronnie, how you doing? I'm good. Hey, let's talk a little bit about, obviously, you're, you're on the tour uh, just wrapping things up and you got a little break here. You decided to come over to Rockfest to rock out. First of all, do you enjoy doing festivals? Uh, just depends. Uh, tonight should be interesting because it's all seated and it's raining. So we're going to see what's going to happen tonight. So how do you get them out of their seats then? That's the question. I think that's the easy part for me. It just depends on how much rain there is. There's a there's no um, weather advisory, right? No, you're, we're you're in no man's land. You'll be good. You'll be good by then. Yeah, this is crazy because Kadat's like a town of what two thousand people, and uh, there's probably twenty five thousand plus going to be out there tonight. Really? Uh, yeah, really. Uh, if you would have saw it last night when Pantera was uh, here. Uh, from top to bottom, completely filled. It's probably going to be that way tonight, too. And I know you've uh, – that's the question I really have for you. You've gone from kind of playing small shows to now to filling out arenas. What has that been like? Uh, it's a dream come true. It's your typical, um, you know, response, you know, I can't believe it, you know, kind of thing. Seems like I just uh, blinked and it happened kind of thing. But, I, you know, I've been working a long time for this, so – I have radio to thank for that because radio literally took it to the next level. And without radio, that would have never happened, I think. We were playing 2,000, 3,000. I'd be excited to play 2,800 tickets. I'm like, wow, cool. And uh, my label's like, radio broke you. And I'm like, I I'll see it when I believe it, you know, or believe it when I see it. And um, I mean, 9,000 tickets. We sold out Red Rocks pretty much, stuff like that. So it's just a whole nother level. Let's yeah. talk about that. You're endorsing radio, and that's uh, it's surprising to some because a lot of people have kind of shunned away from the radio and that. But obviously, you're at your peak right now, and you think this is it. Uh, radio definitely changed it. It's so obvious. Like, we went number one at radio, and then uh, a whole shift happened, a whole new demographic of people. And, you know, it's just very obvious. You know, I had we had a core fan base, and then radio – Went to number one, like I said, and um, a lot of new people showed up. You can see it in the crowd. It's very obvious. So I, we thankful for that. You know, as a kid growing up, did you ever think people would be singing back songs that you wrote? That was my number one dream. Is That was the first goal, dream. And that happened at my first show, kind of. And I, like, fell in love with that idea. So, So now it's just, like, crazy to see, you know. What was it like, actually, when you heard your songs on the radio for the very first time? What, what, what did you think, I guess? I'm kind of curious on that. It, 2006, when they were being really nice, my local station, I was like, whoa, you know, it was a big deal. My friends called me and stuff like that. So, you know, since then, I was like, always wanted to be on radio, you know. And uh, I noticed that all the big bands that stay big for a long time with loyal fan bases are bands that were broke at radio disturbed papa roach look how long papa roach has done this for you know they're still selling out venues they're still doing you know what i mean go to europe they still do well so radio is a big part of it you mentioned papa roach let's talk about that right now um i know i watched the video of you and uh jacoby when you showed him the first time or at least you got to hear uh, your rendition of your re-image song last resort mm -hmm. and uh some of the guys in the video were saying you're shaking what was that like uh you know like i get nervous even showing my songs to anybody like um besides my girlfriend obviously because we live together i just show her stuff see her reaction but like if i'm showing it to somebody that i don't hang out with on a day-to-day -day basis i get a little nervous you know it's just a, a normal thing you know but I started the tour with them. We were on tour that day. That was the second show. We didn't get to hang out yet. I've known them for a long time, so I'm used to them. But it was the whole room full of all of them. And it's like you're walking into someone else's territory. You know, you're comfortable in your house. I would, you know, you're in their green room and they're all sitting there and it's really quiet and you can kind of hear your, your blood rushing through your body kind of thing. So. It was a little nerve-wracking, especially the song's super slow. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, you're going to be a little nervous. So so obviously the reaction from Jacoby was amazing. Was that the reaction? Well, obviously it's the reaction you were hoping for, but uh, I guess what was going through your mind after that? Uh, it was like a relief, you know. Um, I knew it was going to be good. It's undeniable. I know there's an emotion that happens. I showed it to her. She's like a, a, 
a meter for it. She started crying when she first heard it. And then uh, Jacoby called me and said his wife was crying. Wow. His wife started crying, you know. So, uh, and then his brother, Jacoby's brother, um, hit me up too and said that he was moved by it as well. So I figured something good happened from it. So what gave you the inspiration to do that, I guess? And, and I'm sure a lot of people that listen to our radio station are really curious. Uh, how, where does that creativity come from? Uh, that was, I wanted to switch it up and I want to do a reimagine. And I felt like I didn't want to do another version of mine cause I've done it twice. I was like, what's the biggest rock song? And you know, what's got the craziest lyrics that, that are like very, if you really just read the lyrics, you're like, Whoa. And if you put it over an emotional thing, it will really hit. And it was that one. I mean, that song is one of the biggest rock songs of the last 20 years at radio. It's got billions of streams and it's still every single person. If you sing it, someone's going to sing it. Even kids, they know the melody, they know the lyrics, you know, at least the beginning. Um, and when you put it over like a, orchestration like that and slow it down and sing it with a different emotion you're like these lyrics are gnarly they're like whoever wrote this is was going through something pretty serious you know so well the cool thing about it too is uh obviously stripping it down like that uh it, it makes it a totally brand new song and that's that's the cool thing i think that probably when i talk to jacoby tomorrow i bet she's gonna say yeah that's my song but that's actually kind of ronnie's song now because you made it yeah, I, that's why I try to call it reimagine because uh, I don't want it to be a cover because then people judge it like it's supposed to be the same song, just a different singer. You know, reimagine means it's a new song with the same feel. You know, there's a the melody's kind of the same. Yeah. It just kind of changes a little bit. You know. Hey, I'm going to get going here pretty soon, but one thing I want to ask you about, uh, obviously, and I had I caught one of your interviews you did with. Uh, uh, Ken Anthony from All Access. Mm -hmm. You were chatting with him on a Zoom or a video and that, and uh, we were talking about records. And uh, back in the day, you made records, but now you've been making a lot more singles. Talk about that a little bit, I guess. Uh, why you're choosing to do more singles rather than a full album or an EP? I'm about to release a full album, but I was doing singles for so long because I feel like your creativity nowadays, because of ADHD and swiping, people have their attention span is closing in and by the day it seems and uh i feel like when you concentrate um all your creativity onto one song two two and a half minute song three minute song and video it's almost like uh when you release it it's a spectacle and it's people have been waiting for this and the best of the best of what you can do as a person goes into one thing instead of spreading your creativity thin you know most albums have three good songs one big song second one's pretty good third one's like yeah it's all right the rest of them are like filler most albums there's there's some front to back albums that are amazing you know and i feel like those bands got lucky you know or whatever um so you know you can't sit in the studio and try to you know keep those juices flowing like try to make a full banger album all the time you like if you just focus for months on one song you're gonna make a really good song and it's worked out for me you know radios played all my songs and stuff and people really i feel like people appreciate the songs more now you know the the ones that i focus on you know so absolutely i i've got three beautiful daughters at home that when pop uh po popular monster came out mm -hmm. uh they were just blown away by it all three of them are dancers high school dancers okay. and they really wanted to find a way how to make it into a routine so uh oh, they cool. tried a little bit but uh some of the beats got a little bit too i think <laughs> it was like a 16 beat they said yeah. dad and it said we only can do it in eight so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway so but uh hey the last thing i want to ask you is obviously you just covered reimagined i should say a song but i'm curious is there an artist out there that you would love to have either cover or reimagine one of your popular songs now uh, I would say like Adele or something. You're about the third or fourth person that says that. She's just a wonderful singer. She's an incredible singer. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, she's massive, you know. I appreciate her vocals, you know. Uh, it would be insane for her to reimagine like, I don't know, like a deep cut or something. I don't know. Yeah. So a little Ronnie Radke and Adele uh, collaboration thing going on. You know, I feel like... Uh, I'm capable and uh, with my vocals I know I can be on a track with her and 
people it would live up you know because she has an incredible voice you know and i feel like i could keep up on on a track like a orchestration track or something like that well, Ronnie, I really appreciate your time here. Uh, enjoy it tonight here in Wisconsin. They are going to treat you well, and thanks so much for this time. Thank you, man. Once again, that's Ronnie Radke, and that is Falling in Reverse here at 94 Rocks at Rockfest.